Hey, welcome back. This is now the third in this series of videos which I'll, in which I'm introducing Luckrib slowly <laughs> to you. Uh, in the first video, I showed briefly how to download Weta files. Second video, I showed briefly how to uh, view the content graphically and through text and through mediograms. And in this video for the Mac, I want to show uh, a few of the shortcuts and a few of the features of the app, uh, which are useful to know as you work with weather data, uh, but which may take a little while for you, for you to discover. So the first one is that the keyboard, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts on the Mac, uh, which make working with these files uh, easier. Uh, one of the most useful keyboard shortcuts is the one which allows you to change the uh, forecast time. Uh, depending on what you're looking at, looking at a uh, forecast interval, uh, can be more useful than looking at the interpolations. If you use the left and right buttons to uh, change the time, you'll end up uh, at a forecast time. So if you, it's a subtle difference, but if you look at the uh, time in the top of the screen, this is showing you that uh, the visual, what you're seeing here is a interpolation between 66 hours of forecast and 72 hours. Uh, whereas if you use the left and right buttons on the keyboard, you'll end up at a forecast. So this is the 78 hour forecast. Uh, that can be useful. Uh, you can discover these keyboard shortcuts by going up to the menu bar and just hitting uh, one of these menus and all the keyboard shortcuts are uh, here on the right hand side. Uh, so you can move to the start of a file with command left. Let's give that a try. Hold down the command button, hit the left, and we'll go to the start. Command right, go to the end and so on. That can be useful. Uh, the other thing that we've seen now is that the, uh, there's information being shown in the top right-hand corner, but the units at the moment are in knots. Uh, and you have control over what the units are being used by the app. And if you go up to the uh, Preferences window, you'll open the Application Preferences, and in the General area, these are different uh, areas of preferences. Uh, you have control over the, uh, the time zone, uh, how the directions are shown, uh, and so on. Uh, the units are in the second area, and if you want to change the speed to something else, uh, miles, per, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, or whatever, you can do that. Uh, you can change the distance uh, shown it defaults to nautical miles, but it could be uh, in kilometers or whatever else you want to do. So yeah, just open up this window and go through and choose your settings. Uh, I'll go through the rest of these in a future video. So yeah, there you have units. Uh, it's a useful thing to, so you can, as you download files, the, def the app by default won't delete the older files. So here we have two versions of this Florida file. And it's also quite useful, or it, one of the reasons why the older files aren't, aren't deleted immediately is that they can be useful in tracking the progress of a forecast. So you may, you may only want to use the most recent forecast for your planning, but it's useful to see how the forecast has progressed over time. Uh, and you can do that easily by hitting a, an, a, another keyboard command. And if you go up to view, if you want to view the previously shown group file, that's command down. So I can use the left and right buttons. I'm hitting the up and down arrows to change files. And if I hit the control down, it, it will toggle between them. And that can be useful when you're working on a, or trying to study a weather forecast. And you had made plans yesterday for what you want to do today. And now you've downloaded new weather data and you see that your plans are all awry because things have changed. You can go to the uh, point in the forecast and flip between two, the two, the older file and the most recent file to see what changed. Uh, that can be useful. What else we have? The other thing you want to do, this file contains rain uh, as well as sea level pressure and wind. Uh, and one of the easiest way to see rain is just is this with this rain pressure preset. Uh, it's a very simple and clean way of uh, seeing rain and uh, sea level pressure. 
And the other way I use uh, commonly for this data combination is looking at the wind rain pressure combination. Uh, but if you want to look at rain by itself, it can be a bit confusing to differentiate which of these colors is rain and which is wind. Uh, so this combination makes that very clear. Uh, and going back and forth between this area and studying the weather can be a little bit tedious. So you would guess that there'd be a way of making that faster, and there is. If we open up the view menu, there's a select previously shown style set option. And that's available with the key combination uh, option command down. So I'll hold down the option key, hold down the command key, and then hit the down button. And uh, that's flipping between the two most recent combinations. So if I had chosen pressure and uh, wind pressure, and hold down option command down, I'll flip between those two. Uh, but in, in this case, it's useful to go between rain pressure and wind rain pressure. And you may go to some point uh, in the forecast and then quickly hold down those buttons and, and see the differences between the, the different way of seeing more information. Uh, that's more useful when you have more parameters in a file. You may download simulated radar in order to study squalls. Uh, so you can be examining uh, sea level pressure and wind at one point and then hit the uh, option command down button to flip to the uh, simulated radar uh, view. Uh, so that's pretty fast and convenient. Uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, the simple way of using the program is simply to uh, go over to the left hand side and then click on what you want to look at. But the keyboard combination is going to make that a little bit easier for you. Uh, yeah, there's not much more I want to cover in this video, keeping them short. Uh, oh, animation, the, you can animate uh, using these different buttons in the timeline. Uh, you can also animate you know, using this, the space key. <laughs> you hit the space key, you'll know, turn animation on and off. And I think I may leave it there for this video. Uh, yeah, there's more coming. Thanks for your patience. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.